Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. We have a money match, a grudge match, a fun match, a show match on the line, and hopefully a great match. Because we have two of the best players and most entertaining players in North America. In the bottom right, coming into live Twitch chat, Oh, no, we're going to... Just next game. Really? Really? You're going to spoil my intro like that special? Ruining everything. Um, coming into Twitch chat saying, I want your money, Winter. And uh, now ruining my intro. So please subscribe so I can make more. And also proxying a barracks. It is Juanito. It is special. It is the Mexican Terran player who's captured the hearts and minds and smiles and GSL points of so many. And in the top left, the American Protoss from Root Gaming. Always entertaining. It's Buck. Get your Doritos chips. Get your uh, anything probe related, Protoss related, your stinky cheese. I, I gave the option of best of five or best of seven. Best of seven, more money. Uh, and Special said it was up to Puck. Puck said best of seven. So that either indicates no matter what he wants more money or uh, he's confident in a longer match. Now maybe we should talk about the game a little bit because there's a Reaper building in an interesting location as well. There is a little specific Reaper cliff jump area. Buck has... Does that actually wall off here? Because it seems there are two gates that can potentially block out the Reaper and it will do so successfully. Puck has already seen the lack of information, the lack of a barracks. He knows the Reaper's coming in, but special. Already going straight into the mineral line. Going to be looking to pick up any probes. Special is playing from Korea, by the way. That's why we had that whole conversation. He wants to play on the, the West US server. Makes it a little bit more fair. But uh, already, finding a probe kill. You really do want to make sure you get at least one if you're going to proxy a Reaper. He sees there's a Zealot and an Adept produced. There's no expansion. So overall, you kind of just control the pace of the game with this. It's not necessarily going to be your be-all, end-all. It's not going to be your game-winning move. Oh. I zoned out for a second, and then suddenly just gets... Will he force field? Well, I don't think that Reaper's getting out. He's just looking for... any. he yeah, finds another. Yeah. He knows it's not getting out. The fact there's a sentry at all, by the way. The sentry is the scout of tech. Because sentry is 100 gas. And at this stage of the game, you don't really have much more than 100 gas to invest. So Special knows that's the direction he's gone with it. Cyclone's on the way. Just your basic early defense. This is Thunderbird. Uh, Thunderbird is a map with mineral walls. Something we've been adding in. Uh, inspiration from Brood War. And that means that unless you bring some workers out to, to literally mine the walls out in the middle of the map. There are only five minerals per patch, so a single mining trip. Uh, it's quite a long rush distance. So despite the fact Puck was able to defend this cleanly, he still has very little aggressive potential, and Special definitely knows that. There was a sentry. He used a hallucination early. He's not saving up energy. So despite going for the proxy and getting limited success, delaying the expansion and getting all this information is going to put him in a fine location. Now, a double clone drop. It's been a little while since we saw too much of this. Still an option, especially when your opponent has limited units. He saw the Adept on the way across. Now, neither player... Well, Puck does not know that these are Cyclones in here. He probably thinks it's Widowmines. The Cyclones will drop out. Will they get a lock-on? He's going... Uh, the lock-ons aren't quite... Con oh, what a... What a play! Great micro out of special. And is he really going to try this? Are you crazy? He's going to try to dodge a stalker shot. 
not quite going to be enough. Unfortunate there. And the Adept's going to find some kills. So not a great start. A little Tried to dodge one Stalker shot to kill another Stalker, but ends up losing everything, unfortunately. Puck now starting to secure a little bit of a lead. He, he's picked up a few SCV kills. He picked off the first medevac. Blink is on the way, which means any further harassment is going to be really difficult to pull off. From here, Special either has to commit to a two-base timing, or, well, he doesn't have a third command center. So, it looks like a third base, t uh, two base timing is in the future. Widowmine, is he gonna do the trick? You gonna throw some shade? Oh, wait. Oh my god, really? Well, I guess this is simpler. So, yeah, you can do that. Don't try that at home, kids. Oh, special fun. Getting that liberator and gonna find even a stalker. Three probe kills. Not terrible. Yeah, Observer, obviously here. Special knows that. And the worker counts are, are a little interesting. So this has been a trend, especially lately, always throughout Terran, uh, Terran history, expanding while attacking. It is very likely Special is going to move out. He sees, he scanned, he saw there weren't two gases at the natural. I'm not sure what kind of glimpse he got of the army composition, but he actually has more workers. Oh, he missed! The the Observer is so deep here. Puck with that vision. Sometimes the bet you don't want to half-ass it. Instead of half-assing two things, full-ass one thing. And that Observer went deep in the paint. And that means the kind of generic scan. Oh, yeah. So at this point, it's obvious the Observer exists. I mean the, uh, well, yeah, the Observer exists in this scenario. That gave him all the information he needed to intercept the Widowmine dropped before it could get anywhere. Plus one infantry weapons completes. And despite the, the aggressive actions early, like many North American TVPs, uh, we are evening out into kind of a, a relatively standard game in Puck. I would say is in, in a kind of interesting, and by that I mean uncomfortable position. You don't usually want to be in an interesting position as a Protoss, because that means you're vulnerable to certain things. Special's held on to a, a potential attack timing, and that's the sign of a confident Terran, by the way. A lot of Terran players, the the boogeyman of, Ter of Protoss and Zerg is always so strong, like, if I don't get damage done now, they're going to have any amount of units that I can't deal with. But special, like his uh, good friend T.Y., and very similar player, always looking for that next step. He's got a Ghost Academy, Liberators, more workers. Puck does have a nice defensive position. Oh, the more workers uh, might not be true forever. The probes are pulled away. Oh my god. Okay, that shot almost went off to a disgusting place. Another drop in the main. A triple drop to the third. He's trying to start tearing him apart. He's all over everything. Puck gonna have to scramble back. Clean up the Widow Mines. The worker count has been gutted. He's down 18. A few Marauders as well. This won't be the killing blow. At least it shouldn't be. Yeah, but suddenly, a little bit of mismanagement, a few too many units in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Blink Stalker's cut down so they can't chase. And and it's not like this, there's no saving grace. Well, okay, the saving grace for Puck are the upgrades. Is the upgrade, however you want to, whichever was more accurate. But 2-2 is on the way. The worker count, he's down 20. He, he's done no counter damage. Special comes in with a, a relatively minimal amount of units. A Widowmon drop and a triple drop, which isn't a huge commitment considering the travel distance. 
and finds 20 probes and gets out with many of his units. If you keep the medevacs alive, what does that mean? You can build liberators. You no longer have an obligation to have a bunch of medevacs for your bio units because you just kept them intact anyways. So not only doing damage but maintaining the medevacs a key part of this attack because you can replace the bio but it takes longer time on the starport is at a premium. Or starports, does he just have the one? Of course not, he's got two with reactors. And this observer for Puck has been good, but not nearly good enough. Plus three attack is on the way, Ruptors are the gamble. And I say gamble because it's going to rely on special, is this a scouting disruptor? Uh oh, uh oh, where are you going? Or are they just high grounded? No, okay, what is the rally point on the robo? Oh Jesus, oh no. No, 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 wait, no, no, what, it, no, they seem to be, I don't, the sneak ruptors, okay, okay, yes, 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 <laughs> I take back my original statement, these are flank ruptors, two twos coming out, a few marauders scouting ahead, Take note, Diamond Terrans. He sees the army with enough time to potentially siege up the Liberators, but guess what? The Flank Ruptor coming in for the side swipe. The curveball! A massive hit in the center mass. A nice split at the last second. Was it worth it? Maybe. And now the danger, the fear, is in his heart. Special still at 200 supply. Immediately replaces it. The Liberators are going to zone out gonna be very hard to breach this position so he's just not going to widow mines connect is he coming back i don't know like those disruptors are very good at running away all oh, the fade away air ball another shot mostly whipped he has no more shots that's not very many he needs the force fields there they are buck studied at hogwarts his spell casting is top notch 3-3 three, three on the way. Puck just trying to buy time so we can get those upgrades online. Another shot comes through! Another big hit! The flank ruptor comes through again. But now Special's on the warpath. He's cornered Puck back on his side of the map. He will force him into a fight. EMP's landing across the board. Those stalkers already vulnerable. Now even more so. Another shot. Hits only Zealots. Liberator's gonna be jumped on with the blink. There's not that many bio units. He's going towards the natural. Recall coming through. Immediately swerves out of the way. But he didn't bring all the units. The blink. He's got him in no man's land. Nice scout with the uh, unmanned medevac special. Are there that many stalkers? He's pinned. The thing is, the amount of commitment Puck has to make to keep those, uh, keep those medevacs pinned is possibly too much. Special scouts with a marine sees the opening, sees daylight, and slips into it. This medevac shot down. So Puck, now, despite all the moves Puck has been making, he's been winning battles. The war still, though, is in Special's favor. He's getting the right unit composition. He got a fourth base quicker. He has more workers. Catching up with the 3-3 three, three upgrades. Ghost Liberators against someone who is just now making a Templar Archives. There's no Stargate. Three more command centers for special. Looking to get the boys, uh, well, make them unemployed, ideally, one way or another. Some aggressive defense here has to come through for Puck. He can't let those Liberators get too close. Special has nine of them. Is there a Warp Prism? There is no Warp Prism. There's no potential for counter damage this moment. This base about to be isolated. He really needs to kill those Liberators. But he's just simply not. That's so many. A Venn diagram of freedom against the American Protoss. He just has so many Liberators. Another Disruptor shot hits a singular Marine. He's, the base is gone. Cornered and killed. 
Another air ball. Another disruptor shot. Targeted down. Puck is is pushed back. He's at 170 supply. 177. But what does he even do? What's the play? He can't let himself be cornered again. He has to fight. The blink onto the Liberators. The disruptor shots right through, taking out big chunks. He's looking for the curve. He gets into the Medivax. The blinks chases down one. Full of units. And suddenly special. Special. His supply gutted instantaneously. Puck chose his moment perfectly, and suddenly 162 to 135, a single medevac survives the assault. But Puck still has a lot of work to do. He has to get through a planetary. There's still a couple liberators. Three colossi in the back, Eddie, a lot of backstop potential. The planetary Eddie, a lot of DPS into this army. Special trying to hold on. He's back to his bunker. The planetary taking a lot of chunks. 3-3 three, three is on the way. Ship weapons and plus 3 armor. Remember, Puck does have a great economy behind this. The bunker will go down. Finds a couple more stalkers with it, making the Liberators more and more effective. There's no counter damage right now. There's simply just so many Liberators. Puck's not going to be able to break them here. He needs a fourth. Special. Ever on top of the macro. That observer still watches. The orbitals, there's a base in the top right, special. He will bend, but he has yet to break. Oh my god, that disruptor almost finding the boys. Puck keeps the pressure on, but there's still no warp prism to reinforce this easily. The planetary holding a great position. Targeting down disruptors, no shots! But the Colossi, the Colossi take a lot of those Terran units. He doesn't have any Ruptors, he has to retreat. Puck is biting off more than he can chew right now. He just has to keep kiting back. The problem is, his economy, just not great. More Stalkers coming through, mineral walls all over the place. Might want to think about mining those. Storm is done, and he's eliminated the ghosts. The Liberators are going to have range. They don't yet. He finds one. Once Liberator range is done, Special is in prime position to bounce back. The lack of Liberator range has kept Puck in this game. I'm actually surprised it took this long to find it. A scan on everything. He sees the Templar. Should see Ghosts in production immediately. As soon as he has the money. Dark Shrine on the way. Looking for the sensor tower. Gets it. Puck has seen this base, right? Yes, he's seen the base in the top right, but ranged liberators are going to make life very, very difficult. Already sieging up, ghosts in production. The probes are mining through the center. Stalker's being warped in. Liberator not perfectly sieged. He hasn't sent any others out. Wait, what? Can Puck not see it? Oh my god. That positioning. The high ground is blocking the exact position Special's Liberator is in. What? Oh, it's moves like that. Th those are the kind of moves that, that take a game that's looking maybe even, maybe even a little in your favor and bring it all the other way. Oh, the ghost in the center of the map. The EMP is not finding the Templar yet. Feedback on the secondary Templar. Storm finds a lot of the Liberators. Scans across the board. I'm not sure what he's looking for over here. Maybe a misclick, or maybe he's, he spotted something. Storms, he's looking for Libra. He's got to cut off as many as possible. There is no Stargate. Some more Templar from the north. Feedback's on the Medivac. going to make the Colossi way more effective. Now, he could potentially flank around the front, but these Liberators, even more dangerous than last time. How many? He's got ten of them. Double digits. A lot of them badly bruised. The Stalkers are going to have to come forward. The Storms softening things up. Not all the Liberators are in position. The Ghosts come through. Where are the Disruptors? Disruptors may be from the backside. He's looking for another shot. Storms to keep everything intact. Every Liberator has gone down, but so have most of everything on the ground for Puck. He can't really blink reliably to chase. He's going for the Metavax. He's going to lose a lot of his Stalkers for it. 
Reinforcements coming through. Still has a lot of Colossi. The Colossi, 15 kills. 25 kills. 15 kills. Turrets are actually going to zone them out. That's, that's why they're here. And for observers and all that. He's going to fight into a planetary. I don't know, Kev. Another disruptor shot. Looking for the center mass. Not going to find it. The marauders, a lot of them going to go down. But there's enough bio left over. He's going to split and stim. Liberators looking for shots. If the stalkers are gone, the marauders will rule. Immediately picks up a drop. It's five bases versus five bases. Both players still at 70 workers. Still a high economy game. Neither able to land at critical blows. Puck forced to retreat. He's going to bring everything off the map. Special immediately scouting to see if that's the case. At the same time, DT's being warped in at a proxy pylon. That was from the probe from about 20 minutes ago that he left there. The drop's coming in towards the main. The DT's will warp in at the proxy pylon and walk right out. The Templar Archives, a very important building in this scenario. Looks like the drop will be cleaned up. More units in the center of the map. Puck still trying to hold on. Seeming to be, seeming to win every fight. But overall, oh no, a warping of zealots to reinforce right before in comes the Liberator Special, giving himself so many opportunities. Recall is off cooldown, but so many probes are going to go down before he can do anything. The army's just going to scramble back. In fact, he recalls right on top. The base is being targeted. He's going to trade all of this bio. He finds a disruptor and a nexus. Special maintains a uh, supply lead. Puck scrambling to keep things intact. He does not have a Stargate. He can't go for the Tempest to help counter the ranged Liberators. He just has to fight tit for tat. Which eventually the Liberators will find a position. There's still five Medivacs and five Liberators. He's got three Starports. Special is not a player who screws around with things like that. He's not going to try to make Marines and Marauders work all day. He knows how to bring the full Terran arsenal. Another Liberator coming in. Puck has left the Stalkers around for it. Aggressive defense is required in this scenario. Fortunately, the Liberator a little bit out of position will be picked off. A little bit more breathing room for Puck. DT is found. Couple scans used. Special has how many orbitals? Five. Yeah, I think he's okay. That Observer just barely not spotted. That means Puck's going to see the ground army moving. He can look for maybe Disruptor shots. These are actually destructible rocks that nobody ever remembers. Marauders and Marines on the left side trickling in. There is a Super Pylon, some DTs coming in. Nuclear missile on the way. Looks like some very forward missile turret. Are those Observer blocking missile turrets? This is the world we're living in. The Nexus is halfway gone. The DT and Zealot will be able to clean it up. Puck is pushing forward. Liberator's trying to maintain a defensive posture for now. Oh, another shot. Finds a decent connection, but the curveball not quite going to connect. I just contradicted myself a little bit. That's fine. You got it. You figured it out. Oh, EMP is coming through. Disruptor shots. Not going the distance. A nuclear missile in the center of the map. Uh, Puck. Now, he can use it. He can just cancel through. Where are the disruptor shots? The fade away. The splash damage. Once again, not putting everything together. The nuke is canceled or killed. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Puck is looking around. The scans are constant. The liberator count is at eight. The bio trying to isolate the base. Successful so far. If the pylon goes down, there's no reinforcements. But the ghosts are out on their own. The bio takes out the pylon. This base should be going down. But can Puck take a decisive battle on the other side of the map? Down goes the Nexus. A lot of supply committed. There's still a proxy pylon back here. He's base trading a Terran. This is never... Well, this is never a recommended course of action unless you know for sure you're in an okay spot. One Colossus survives the assault. He's chasing back. Recalls off cooldown. DTs will clean everything up. The supply is surprisingly even. Storm, gonna be good. A turret will kill the cut. Wait, not quite massive disruptor hit. Another fadeaway shot. Looking for the ghost. Doesn't quite find him. Base in the center of the map. 
A lot of SCVs are going down, still somehow over 150 supply for both sides. Disruptor fade away, almost killed his own Templar. The Liberators are on the chase, takes two planetaries for his one Nexus. Reinforcements coming in for Protoss. Looking for a Liberator. He's backed into a corner. Was Recall used? Recall is off cooldown. He could get out of the corner. Nobody puts Puck in a corner. He actually has so many units, they won't all fit in a Recall. So, it's not the ideal choice here. Yeah, that's a real problem that these players have. Somehow maintaining these huge economies as well. 180 supply. The, oh, he's gonna need to back off. He's cornered. Trying to go back forward. Is there enough splash damage? The Disruptor says maybe. Suddenly, Puck, the liberation is at hand. There are no more disruptor shots. Stalkers on their own are not going to cut it. Special is stimming through. He's tearing through the front. And suddenly, he finds himself with a 50 supply advantage. Where's the splash damage? He doesn't have it. He's on the liberators. He's looking to find it. But the bio underneath the EMPs, it's too much. GG. Special takes game number one in a quick 27 minutes. P pretty good game. Treasure Armand, the Elder, tried his best. Professor Joe the Gray. Couldn't quite cut, well, I actually couldn't quite cut it. What a game. Starting from the proxy. I did change servers, but the technology isn't there for that to always work correctly. And I don't know why. So yeah, we could just stop there, right? There's, can we ever get another game? I, I, I downplayed it. That was an incredible game. The, give me a sign that this is going on YouTube. Yes, I do like money. Thank you. Like and subscribe so I can throw more money. Remember, Special, this match happened because Special was like, Hey, I want your money. Let's do show match. And I'm like, 1v1 me, bro. And then I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe we should do something a little different. Ah, uh, Jimmy. Well. Yes, in the bottom right, it is Special. And in the top left, we have Puck. Game number two, best of seven. Special just... That was some BS. All right, it's, it's, it's hard to complain. Special is playing from Korea, and he was playing with a pretty significant ping disadvantage because for some reason Battle.net decided we were playing on the central US server. Puck, uh, North Dakota is a little bit 
closer to central U.S. Puck, one of the four residents of North Dakota that uh, have the internet. Shout out to my other three fans. No proxies this game. Now here's the thing. Special is a, uh, the full package, if you will. Give me a Doritos chip. Uh, he, he is very capable of killing you with a proxy. Alright, he will not hold, if he thinks a, a good play in a best of seven is to put a barracks right outside your base every single game, he'll do that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean he can't fall back to that incredible macro and, and, one thing that set him and Terran... I'm, I'm gonna call them the Chess Master Terrans. I like... That That sounds fancy to me and accurate. Uh, because both TY and Special play in a way that... really Like, it's ahead of the curve. Because they're always one tech ahead, ideally, of a Protoss or a Zerg. As opposed to one behind. You're used to watching a TVZ. It's like Ultras come out. It's like, oh no, I need to get to Ghosts! Special TY... They already got, like, three, four ghosts out and are fully ready to snipe. Against Puck there, you saw he had Liberators and Ghosts before a Templar Archive started. He's not holding back. He's not waiting. He didn't take the third base quite as quickly, but he still ended up with a higher worker count. Twilight Council's on the way. This is an advanced blink build the sentry to build up potentially scouting information early and also potentially give him high ground vision for blink without needing to also invest in a robo quite as quick but that game won though I that was one of the best TVPs I've seen. And imagine if Special could have microed against the Disruptors better. I don't want to, because then Puck would have probably been much more dead much more quickly. The flank Ruptors kept him going for a little while. Oh. Draws the units out of position with the Reaper does Special. How many probes? That's the question. How many probes? Five probes? It's not terrible. Nice warp in block. Five probes. Okay. That's, uh... Eh. It's not bad. Not incredible. Not bad. Not too much mining time lost. And cleaned up quickly, too. So... I don't think Puck can be particularly unhappy with that. Especially if he just happens to find himself a Christmas Banshee. He knows it's coming. He's looking for it, specifically. Blink is on the way. Like, you don't go Hellions without a tech follow-up. Incredible snipes out of Puck. He was looking for it. He knows... Now, that's the benefit of just cleaning up the Hellions. If they commit immediately, their starport unit usually isn't close behind. Well, as close behind. And if you clean them up quickly, you have a little bit more leeway to do things like that. He sniped it before Cloak. I think he actually canceled Cloak. No, he didn't. Wait, does he even have a Banshee? Like, the best cloak for Banshee is not having any Banshees at all. <laughs> and if you're watching live, Puck is also streaming. I don't believe special is, but you can use the multi-command. Probably should do that whole squad stream thing if it actually works. Still has so many issues. Now, Puck not, not taking any chances here. He's got an Observer and a Banshee. I mean, uh, and a Shield Battery. So, oh, spot it quickly. Wow, he's not pucking around anymore. Game number one did feel a little bit shaky. But game number two, puck is sharp.
Robo Bay is on the way. Immediately after killing the Hellions, well, and the Banshee, especially, he took a third, because you know what that means? All of your production early on has been negated. There is no threat of you attacking this base. At least not now. So I better take it sooner rather than later if I'm going to take it at all. Special is doing a massive two-base timing. He does not have a third command center. He has five barracks on two bases. He's already building up the tank count. Raven's done. If the Raven gets sniped, that's huge. There's no way Puck's going in here. If Puck jumps up here, he should be losing most, if not all, of his stalkers. So now we count down the clock. In approximately... Is Stim done? No, Stim has not started. Is he not getting Stim? Special, have you walled off your own siege tanks? That's my specialty. Oh, wait. <laughs> He's not getting stim. A third command center is on the way, but he's not skimping at all on this product. This isn't worth it, I don't. Wait, what? What? So sharp. So edgy. Forces the third base to cancel. Is that the straw that forces special to pull the boys? That would be something that a lesser Terran would do. I mean, he might do it, but. He's not saving up to rebuild a CC. In fact, I'm not 100% sure he wanted the CC in the first place. That might have actually been for Puck's benefit. Or he could just make it now. I'm, I'm hedging my bets. One of the two. Well, he's moving out, so he'll probably just make a CC behind. This is uh, a little bit of indecision here. Special, a little bit, it seems, tilted. As, yeah, Observer gets spotted and sniped. I'm not sure, is he just going to wait? Is this the holding for so long your opponent no longer thinks you're attacking play? Because that's what it seems like. He's waited so long, there is no third command center. Are the boys coming? Stim is halfway done. The Raven is near full energy. Liberator's on the way. This probe will take one for the team. A very important one, I might add. That's still a very scary Terran army. Buck has to play some aggressive defense again. You can't let him just siege up every time he sieges. That's a few more seconds on the clock. One one's on the way. Uh, a warp prism for Templar. Shield batteries are up. All Puck has to do is buy enough time. I mean, also in control very well, because this is still a very scary Terran army. It has better upgrades. It's going to have plus one against plus zero. There is a raven to muck things up. The Templar is splitting. The, the prism is done. Storm is closing in. The upgrade stim is now done as well. The Blink Stalker's poking forward, gonna force a siege, but one Templar gonna be found and killed. Ten seconds on Storm. He, he really needs Storm. This Terran army, he's maxed out nearly at less than ten minutes. Well, both players have, but... The Templar. A oh, beautiful feedback on the Raven, that's huge. He has three Colossi and now they can't be touched. In fact, Puck is gonna use that as a launching pad to go forward. There's still a lot of tanks at the back. He's gotta be a little careful about this. That is a strong Terran army. Oh, he's finding that out now. That's a whole lot of Terran. Puck down to 133 supply. He can rebuild easier. Of course, he has more economy, but he's gotta be very careful. Tanks hit hard. He's going forward. A couple more tanks gonna be taken out, but the next round of Terran is coming in. Here come the Templar. He can juggle the Colossi back. Cirque de Soleil here at Puck's house. The juggle back onto the high ground. We'll keep all the Colossi intact. The storms will soften up the bio enough for them to actually kill some Terran units. Blank Stalkers looking for the Liberator. Charge lots just enough. Four Colossi now, but he needs Stalkers. 2-2 two, two has started for Puck. You don't want to bite off more than you can chew. Puck might not realize there's no third behind this. He hasn't had much vision on the other side. But is there enough for a special? 
The last tank will fall. So does the Liberator. Just bio. Four Colossi have something to say about that. The Marauders will split and stem, but it's not enough. Puck K takes game number two back. It's tied up. One to one. Decisive execution. That game was everything for Puck. That game one was it. Special already has a map in mind. It's new repugnancy. Very solid. Like, from start to finish. Managing the Reaper, using the Stalkers, not over committing, getting a third very, very quickly. Okay, Jimmy, please. Not that time. Special has had enough. You know how? You know how I know that? He switched his color to red. After it being blue in the lobby. Puck, with a smart move, he's taken the orange color, so Special cannot be the color of Doritos chips. We have an SCV on the way out. I like how committed he is. He's like, well, how close could I... Wait, this could even be... He could even lift it into the main. The, the cliff itself walls off a lot of the potential locations the SCV could be could be stopped from building this barracks. He may lift it into the main. The gases are a little on the later side. Is he... It, hmm. It's a little different from special. Is it just a reaper? He will have 50 gas easily in time. Ghost rush. No. I can't, I want it. Special's actually someone who's ghost rushed, especially in TVZ, um, but also TVP. He'll pull it out. It's a real thing. It's not a common thing for, for very good reason, because as soon as it becomes common, it becomes countered. But every once in a while, the spooky ghosts show up, and the History Channel makes a shitty show about them. Like, remember that one time MVP sniped off 945 Broodlords of Nest T so Nest T could throw the BlizzCon finals? Yeah. Pepperidge Farms remembers. Day 9 remembers. Rest in peace. Alright. Alright. Robotics facility on the way. Oh, looking for the positioning, the wall offs here from Puck. He decided, well, well, this map you can't really wall off the Reaper jump locations because you have the entire cliff to deal with. So far, so good. Puck with a solid defense, losing zero probes. Can't get much better than that. Oh, uh, not quite getting the target. The Adept is on the chase, but the Adept doesn't have a jetpack, which seems like an oversight of Protoss technology. What if Adepts could cliff jump? What if the shades just ignored the bounds of terrain? Shade out into the distance and just fall and die. Good job, everybody. 
No more theory crafting on stream. Oh, puck. I give better than even odds this is Disruptor Drop. Maybe Colossus Drop, but probably Disruptor. I don't see any other reason, but the Rubble Bay will be scouted. A second Reaper is going to confirm this. It looks like one kill coming for special. Finds one. And he has expanded behind. This was a macro proxy. You know, the, the most common thing. Somehow Special finds himself ahead in workers as well. It actually is a macro proxy though, that's not like a joke term. Having two Reapers in the right hands gives a whole lot of map control. So the War Prism's on the way. War Prism speed. There's a chance this is just straight up pressure. In come the ragtag band of Protoss units. We've got an Adept, a Stalker, an Immortal, and a Zealot. The whole cast of characters here. The A-team of Protoss. But at the back, the Widow Mines! The Widow Mines! Oh, Jesus! 11 probes. So now this became less of a, a pressure and more of a necessity. The Adept's in the main. He was busy microing the A-team. Oh my god, the orbital's actually falling. There's not that many units here. He's going to have a speed prism to juggle an immortal. There's nothing to, to decisively deal with that. I guess the Liberator can, can eventually... Oh, the Widowmons are denying mining at the natural. There's not much to deal with it. Now, of course, a bunch of Protoss units are denying mining. Is he going to try to break this? I don't know. The boys are on the ground. The Liberator looking for an opportunity. The Immortal just kind of waltzing away, looking angrily at everything involved. Oh, I don't know. The Immortal gets the damage done. The Liberator does not get a shot. The Zealots are in the mineral line. The, the Marines are chasing the Immortal. It decided he didn't, dis he didn't want to go too far. All right, that wouldn't be very nice. Just maintain a safe distance. It's not a safe distance. But at the same time, another Widowmine drop kills 11 probes! Puck is down to 16. Puck is striking hard, but Special is striking back. 13 SCVs and 11 probes in the last minute are gonna leave Special ahead in workers, and with two orbitals, easily ahead in the game. Puck is gonna have to work some of that micro magic again. There's a Viking on the way, a Disruptor as well. The Widowmine drop is still alive. A speed prism in the hands of Puck is more dangerous than in anyone else's. He's actually just gonna tap on the orbital. If he happens to kill it, which I don't think is likely. Oh, Special's looking for the flank, but Puck with a speed prism once again. The Viking's gonna limit his option. Where are you going, Viking? The Viking lost track of what he was doing. The worker count. Being cut down, Puck's striking back, like, he's really cutting down SCVs here. This is not insignificant damage. Special is slowly, slowly, oh, no, 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 if he loses the prism. Oh, the jukes. Oh, it's over. It's over. He almost threaded the needle. <gasps> the discounting disruptor! Oh! Finds a big hit. Can he recall in time? What do you do now? This is the ultimate battle. The ultimate chase. Did you know Marines are very slightly faster than a Disruptor on the ground? Neither did I. I don't... <laughs> I don't... All right. There's a Scooby-Doo level chase scene going on. Oh, he's chasing the Disruptor. He gets it. But a Colossus shows up fighting the Viking on the ground. He splits Marines without combat shields. The unsieged tank on the way. There's still the Widowmine drop at the back. There's not much anti of the probes are kind of just chilling. Special never forgets. He drops the Widowmines. The tanks are untouched. The mines will fire. 13, 15, GG, Special. Able to keep it together.
He'll take a 2-1 lead. Special never forgets. Representative Vaughn the Misery creating a whole lot of misery for Puck. Fourteen probe kills. A body blow. The proxies, the proxy, the the right up in your grill proxy rags plays have been paying off for special decisively. Yeah, we're doing it live. Go check out Puck. Puck streams on a pretty regular basis as well. I don't... And, and speaking of which... Mm -hmm. Solid matches so far. So this is the tipping point. This is usually when a series either becomes one of the most iconic series, especially that I've ever cast alive. Or we we go in like special just dominates two more games. Or Pac just decides to go full Protoss. Captain Protoss. If this game is good, the rest of the series is gonna be good. I mean, I think the series, don't worry, if the rest of the games are terrible, we'll just edit the rest out and we'll say it was a best of three for YouTube, even though it said best of seven on the screen every time. Nobody needs to know. In the top left, the Mexican Terran, the GSL round of 16 player, living in Korea. No, no, back, Jim. Special, especial, Juanito. And in the bottom right, the Micromancer, struggling uh, against a Terran player who has many of his same strengths but not nearly out of it yet. The ever entertaining Root Gaming Puck. Probe Scout will see a barracks inside of the base for special. He'll probably breathe a slight sigh of relief. gonna deny a command center or at least force it so one of my favorite things when you guys send me in replays are Terran players who uh like well well Protoss players who either pylon block a command center and are like aha or Terran players who see a probe pylon blocking a command center and decide well I guess I have to all in now because he's blocking my CC like Terran buildings can't fly and fun fact, Terran buildings fly faster than overlords. Obviously overlords without speed. Special coming up with a factory, sacking gas. I just... 
Okay, take a little breather. These guys not punching each other in the face for the first few minutes of the game, quite yet at least. That last game, it seems new repugnancy. The last several TVPs, I remember uh, Future versus Neeb at, at Psystorm. Um, oh my god, Puck going for the kill. Cornered with the probes, knocked out by the Adept. I think a little bit of a mistake out of spe Yeah, did, he didn't get very much information at all. Well, you saw the expansion timing, that tells a lot, but you don't really want to be losing the Reaper that early. Uh, but the but New Repugnancy at Sidestorm Cup was also a, a ridiculous, like, one-and-a-half base, all-in base trade scenario. Acropolis, though, the, the rush distance, pretty long. Bases, third base especially, pretty accessible. You see a lot of... Oh, the baits. You've activated... You've activated my trap card. Hiding it behind the big orbital command dish. Oh my god. Another one. I didn't. E I can't even see the little butt. I can't. I'm observing. I have all the vision and the health bars. So take that, GSL. Uh, and I didn't even see that little mine. Of course, that was a hallucinated phoenix. So that means a lot of SCVs wondering what they're doing with their lives right now. But they are the only worker because they have five other extra HP that do not die to the little mine splash. More little mines gonna be coming in, medevac style. Okay, 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 okay. A lot of probes gonna go down here. Actually, significantly less than I thought. But special is gonna get two little mines out. He kind of just dunked them down and burrowed them in, giving uh, no care to whether or not Puck felt like that was something he should be doing. Now, Puck has minimal units because he did go for a very quick third. A third pre-really adding on any extra tech besides Blink. Blink is done, and, and because the Hallucinated Phoenix got the scout that is Widowmind's minimal production, he knew he could get away with a third. He does have to prevent this kind of damage again, though. Because the worst thing that can happen to you if you're going for a third is your economy. Like, if you have a worse than two base economy and you went for a third, not only did it not pay off, but your production is late as well. And that means they can easily find a two-base timing. It's going to be a Brick Protoss style out of Puck. Double upgrades, bunch of gateways, charge lots, only three gas geysers taken. Did he pick off the medevac? Puck intercepted mid-map once again. And on King's Cove, that was... Uh, a big part of his victory is picking off those early air units. What? Are you... Oh, it's dead. Okay. It died. But very sneaky. Looking for a medevac? Fuck. Great interceptions here. Good blank micro. Oh, and Marauders, counter micro out of special. Spons out the army. Looking for another Murdervec to reinforce. Just very active on top of this. How many gates for Puck? He's only got six, so he does need to be very active on the map. This is spotted out. He knows. Oh, he gets another one! And recalls out. He lost one Stalker for two Medivacs. Well, three Medivacs, technically, if you count the Widowmine one. A Marauder. 
beautifully done by Puck. Very clean, but special still has the freight train chugging along. This bought the time for 1-1 to finish. That means the charge lot's that much harder to kill. Already some Archons in the mix. This will be spotted out by the Heroic Probe. Are there any tanks? There are no tanks. He's relying on the Widow Mines. There is no storm. He's just looking for the, the feedbacks here, it looks like. Oh! He uses the Interference Matrix on the Sentry! No Guardian Shield for you! Income! Some Widowmine hits. Oh, he snipes off the Sentry. The feedback's okay on the Metavax. That means limited healing, and with limited healing, Puck may be able to drive this back. The Widowmines, he's trying to retarget. He's trying to keep them from firing. Special maintains the momentum. He's continuing forward. He's tearing through everything at the front. Another Warpin of Zealot. Puck still has the three bases, a whole lot of production to fall back on. The charge lots, he's got to be careful that not everything dies to Widow Mines immediately. The splash damage comes through, he's looking for force field, plus two on the way. The medevac's almost out of energy, a single Widow Mine, one more Widow Mine gonna hit all the charge lots. Puck holding on for now, but special, he has a third as well. He's continuing forward, the production incessant, incredible. He's overwhelming Puck's defenses. The Widow Mines once again, is he gonna target them? He doesn't target fire. But does Puck have enough production behind this? Nine in the way of gateways. A Liberator joins up. There's not much healing left on the Men of X. Special trying to seesaw this back. An Archon comes through. One gateway actually just going to be straight up killed. Liberator flanked by Blank Stalker. He's going to be taken down for now. The Widowmine does trigger. Going to take out one of the Stalkers. Another Widowmine goes. Oh, uh, actually picked up by Special in the one Men of X he does have. Starport units at a premium. Production on both sides is absolutely imperative. The upgrades for Puck, he's a little bit down in supply, but his advantage is the, well, he can reinforce instantaneously, and he has a slight upgrade advantage. Well, actually, no, he doesn't. It's 1-1 versus 1-1 right now. The lack of Metavax is hurting Special pretty badly. He needs, Widow Mines need to be targeted down. One is not. If he targets it onto the Archon, and he gets a hit on the Archon, it also kills the Sentry. Medivac boosted back. The Terran units microing as well. Plus two is closing in. Archon still intact, making it a little bit harder for those Marines to close the distance. Puck on the chase. The lack of Medivac energy and Medivacs in general is making this a little bit harder for Special. Put plus two a few seconds out, and that will change this equation a little bit more. But look at the supply! 155 to 102, Special not being stopped here. Beautiful force field for Puck. A lot of units gonna go down very quickly with the plus two Archons in the back line. But Medivacs are coming up and if these units don't die, they're gonna come back at full HP. A couple Archons reshielded here. The worker count now in favor of Special. He's been continually building SCVs. He starts the 2-2. More Warpins. Four shield batteries. The backstop of Puck here. But he can't get through all these Widow Mines. The Widow Mine shot's coming. And will hit the Archons, not killing either, but badly bruising them. He goes back to his batteries, his backstop for now. But Special continues pushing forward, trying to come up the ramp. Another Widow Mine as well. The batteries, everything at the back line, looking for the feedbacks. Archons, half shields, more batteries coming through. 140 to 100 supply. Another Widow Mine targeted down. One at the back, gonna connect on the charge lots. The charge lots thinning out, but the Stalker's looking for a pickoff on the Metavax. Special comes in with another round. So does Puck. We're going all night. Storm is on the way, plus two armor, two two for special. He's gonna back off, Scan's looking for a fourth, he has a fourth of his own, it's nearly done. The macro engine behind special will not stop. Puck barely trying to hold on as special climbs upwards. Storm though, Storm. Storm. That's what, that's, that's Puck's play. The constant macro is specials. The Archons, he still has a couple Widow Mines at the back. This constant stimming, very taxing for the Metavax, but they're not dead yet and they're not out of energy. The Widow Mines, pretty big connection, connections on the charge lot. Storm is done. Another round of reinforcements coming through. He's looking for a great storm to start things off. And those Archons still intact. 3-3 is on the way. Special not done with 2-2 yet, so there will be an upgrade advantage. He's just circumventing the Widow Mines. Nicely negated on this side. The ones at the front hit the Templar, though. One of them was Storm. Looking for more. Great Storm at the front. Another set of Widow Mines. 
these Templar badly bruised. The water balloons are gonna help. He's picking off the medevacs. Puck is on the chase. He's pushed back. And now Special has to retreat. Picks off one Archon, microing back across the map. Widow Mines looking for connections. We'll find the final Archon. Is there a storm? No, not enough energy. The Templar go down. And this time, even on, on a Reaper grenade in the mix, Puck tried to fight back, but he's slapped down. And now Special has a 40 supply advantage. He will have even upgrades for a moment. The Archons are gone. No sentries. Templar had to be warped in. They don't have energy for Storm yet. As the upgrades draw even, these bio units become incredibly cost effective. If he uses feedbacks, there's not going to be Storm. If there's not going to be Storm, well, not much of a choice now. Beautiful Ghost Drop! And suddenly, shield stripped away. The ghosts look like they will be taken out. The Widow Minefield, devastating, but will be cleared for now. Puck once again pushed back to his third. Special going for a fifth base to, behind this. Another Archon looking to be targeted. Widow Mines not really finding huge connections, but there's not that much left to hit. Puck, if he can pick off enough medevacs, he can still work with this. The Widow Mine got to be careful about that. 162 to 96 supply. Special will not stop. Another Archon. 3-3 three, three is not done. Another Archon. Another Widow Mine. He doesn't blink out. The Stalker's badly bruised. The supply now being doubled. 3-3 three, three is 20 seconds out, but it doesn't matter if you got no units. Special is tearing through everything at the front. Just Stalker's left. Probes pulled. He's desperate. But desperation isn't going to save him. Another Widow Mine will connect on probes. I guess that's best case scenario. Plus three finishing, but Special will not take his boot off his neck. It's all over. Five, eight minutes of pushing. And Buck has been broken. A snipe. GG. Three to one special. Special had five bases and 80 SCVs, but he started the attack with about two going on three bases and 50 SCVs and down in upgrades. He ended with five bases and near 80 SCVs. I think special, pretty good. Gotta lay off those Dorito chips, chat, if we want to see seven games. <clears throat> Puck picks Turbo Cruise. What a series. If you enjoyed this, uh, it actually does help. Like and subscribe and all of that. Because uh, then I can keep giving special money. Which at this point it looks like is very likely. Uh, he will get the brunt of it. It's not over yet. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I do agree. While we're waiting for special to click the ready button for some reason, Turbo Cruise. Um, special is one of those. Uh, he's a template player, kind of like stats. Uh, stats for Protoss. Stats are Neeb for Protoss. Um, or I guess Cyril. Um, Cyril for Zerg. Uh, obviously. He's a player that it's very, it's very clear what he's trying to do and why. 
and he's just so good at it, and that's why you can use him as an example. Puck isn't a great example of a template player, because he has a very, uh, unique style. Uh, I'm trying, like, it's gonna sound bad if I'm like, only Puck can do the things he does, but it's very micro-oriented, multitasking-oriented. Uh, special has gone offline, so maybe Puck's cat this time has gone to his house in Korea and unplugged his surge protector. Ah, uh, as we had, well, Puck's cat getting around. But, but, I've, I've done, uh, Eyes of a Pro Gamer is the clickbaity title for first person perspective. Even watching in first person, obviously all these pro players are very fast. It's very hard to keep up, but very methodical about the way he goes about uh, splitting off units to do counterattacks, things like liberators and medevacs. And the real key is, is not what's happening on the screen, and that's very important, obviously. The constant back and forth, the micro, but it's what's happening off the screen. And that's why Special is so good. Because that entire time, we're staring at a fight. There's uh, Marines and Marauders and Medivacs and Stalkers and, and Blink and Charge Lots and all that. But behind that, if we go back and we just look at anything but the fight, uh, I think that's much more educational, at the least. Um, you can see how much time is focused on making sure that production is intact. Uh, I taught my cat how to blink. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck. Maybe, maybe he's, he's icing the kicker here. <laughs> I win by forfeit. <laughs> yeah, hopefully special will come back as I fill time. The wonders of doing it live, everyone. Um, well, yeah, the constant production. Oh, he's back. We got him. My PC froze. Go, go. It was. A chill came over the air. And, and while I got you guys here, now this was just kind of an impromptu match, but tomorrow, and uh, if you're on YouTube, well, I'm sure it'll be up as well. Tomorrow, I will be doing some show matches, well, casting with, and playing some team games, and maybe some angry coaching um, with Casually Explained. So I'm looking forward to that. Always a lot of fun. And by that, I mean, hopefully... <laughs> I'm well we'll be looking forward to your replays let's put it that way I think we'll have a, a lot to say in a lot of interesting ways So, I said game four would set the tone. Game four, every single one of these games has been great. There have been mistakes, but that's StarCraft. All right, this isn't chess where you can plan out every single move perfectly and still sometimes lose. No, no there's going to be mistakes. It's just about making less and having less impact than your opponents. So, despite Puck being down three to one, I don't think he's out yet. We're on Turbo Cruise, which has the slow zones. That slow everything by 35%. Uh, movement, not, not attack speed. 
<clears throat> a very early probe, but that's kind of par for the course here. The probe harass iconic. I remember. I remember back in the day. As I, I'm. Um, don't worry. I'll shave my head at 10,000 subscribers, guys. Please subscribe. And and one million on YouTube. So tell all your Minecraft friends. Uh, I remember back in the day when when Huck, not Puck, but Huck, if you remember that name. Um. Would would bring two probes to harass an SCV, and it was the most insane micro harass of all time, because Terran players would have a mental breakdown and pull like six SCVs, and they did that for months until it was like, no, 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 if you also have two workers, that counters their two workers. And we eventually learned proportional response is very important. Oh, that tech lab scout is big. Okay, okay, so the probe got in, sees there's no reaper, sees there's a tech lab. That's got to be concussive. Will he go concussive? Yeah. But seeing the tech lab well before the factory is done, that, that shows his hand. That probe? That, that probe? Probius. The real hero. And that gives Puck a whole lot of information. He, wait, did he cancel the concussive before or after? He canceled before the Adept Shade came in. Okay. He showed one Marauder, but he's canceled Concussive, so he's not committing to an all-in. I don't know. Maybe this would have been... I don't know what this would have been, but he doesn't... He didn't go for the Concussive Shell, so he wanted to save... And yes, at this level 50-50, Florencio's anti-warp gate um, ideology coming through... Wait, he restarts Concussive. Okay, so I just don't know anything. Maybe he screwed it up. Or maybe he, he stopped it to counter the Adept Shade. Or, or maybe uh, he changed his mind. I don't know. There's a lot of options. Or maybe I'm just bad. He definitely was started it. He definitely was started it. I have the best words. Um, but the Marauders are on the way across. There will be an Immortal. Uh, immortals uh, take Marauders and they throw them on the ground kick them in the face, and, and then kick them to the curb. Th those are the three shots it takes to kill a Marauder. But it's the Hellions here that are the real kicker. The Hellions are super dangerous. The Adepts are on the other side, side of the map. He's trying to hold his ground. The probes will be called to fight. He actually targets the Hellions because Hellions kill probes way quicker than Marauders do. A great defense from Puck as he does counter damage. In fact, this has gone very well for Puck thus far, I'd say in the scheme of things. Being able to kill any amount of SCVs while holding and getting, well, he's getting a prism. The probes being called into action to fight the Hellions will be successful, but it's not over yet. Special, as long as he has any tools to play with, he's good with them. The Adepts got into the main though. Big mistake here. Now, there's nothing in the main for Puck. He's going to drop the Marines and Marauders in. The Adepts take a lot more control than Micro. Puck, 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 Puck. Puck is... Are you kidding? Oh, my God. He's He is putting the hurt probes in the prism. Oh, my, Did he not? He didn't lose any more probes. He saved all his probes with the warp prism. And then the warp prism left, and now he didn't save his... Oh, my God. I don't... Okay, so, and then this happened. <laughs> uh, so this is, this is not a super pylon. So that was a big mistake out of Puck. Oh, there's a Banshee. It doesn't have cloak. It doesn't need it. Suddenly specials on both sides. He's tearing him apart. 
is actually really awkward. Now, the, the lack of cloak means the Banshee may be killed. The drop in the back. The Immortals are there. They already blasted in. He's chasing. The Oh, and he's not microing the Banshee perfectly. That means the Banshee goes down. And only a Marauder and a Marine in the drop. A Viking's on the way. I... What is this? I don't... <laughs> this is, uh, uh, like a dance battle here. Where both sides are just cheering the others on. It's like, yeah, you drop now. And, and they dance it out. Um, no, no, no. Look at how I pick myself up into my dropship. Okay. As neither side really committing to actual units to kill the other player. Now, two immortals in a warp prism. Dun, 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 Captain Protoss is on the way. But at the back, of course, special. Loses one Marine. Thus, half his drop. Yeah. It is important for special. I will steal that joke. All right. It is important for special, if he wants his three girlfriends in GSL, that his pickup game is strong. And we see it. Oh, Disruptor! It, what? Why is there... Did the Disruptor just walk here? Uh, okay. Yeah. And by walk, I mean glide. Now, for those who don't know, Special had an interview before this attack. He had an interview in GSL of, of what he thinks will be his key to success in GSL. And he said he wants three girlfriends. Because a lot of the top players have seem to have girlfriends. So, if he has three, then he'll have three times the skill. That was that was what he attributed that to. So, uh... Yeah, this, draw, this attack is very scary for Puck. It's all come together very quick. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna macro up his girlfriend count. Whoa, 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 those tanks! Whoa, those tank shots are massive! Whoa! Puck not really ready for this attack, despite the scouting of it. Uh, and suddenly he only has stalkers. Caught very off guard, it seems. GG special! Might not have his three girlfriends, but he does have my money. And that's potentially worth much more. Special takes it four to one. Didn't feel like a four to one. Did not feel like a four to one, did it? But uh, a, a great. In fact, that last game a little anticlimactic there. But a great. I had a lot of fun. This was this was actually one of the best series I've seen uh, in a while. And I and not. I'm trying to be unbiased here. Because I've casted a lot of mediocre series. But that was some great games uh, out of both players. Um, and I hope to see more. I'm glad Special wants my money. Um, so pretty much, if you enjoyed, please find some roundabout or direct way to get me money. Like, subscribe. One like equals one esports dollar. Um... And uh, be like, I want, I want to see special play everyone who's ever played StarCraft in a show match, uh, or things like that. I'm sure I'll appreciate that. But congratulations, he's gonna take it, three to one. And uh, I hope to see some. Oh no, what? Four to one. Uh, uh, and I hope to see more. We'll try to get him in in as many matches as possible. The times don't always overlap well because Korea, but. Thank you guys.